Hey everyone, welcome back to A Geek's Garage. Uh, so, if you've been keeping up the videos you saw in the last episode or last video, uh, that I was able to figure out why uh, I couldn't rotate the crank. Um, and so that's now fixed, the clearance issue is fixed. Uh, and what we're going to do today is go ahead and put all of the pistons back in. Uh, and when we're done with that, uh, you probably notice that I'm leaning on a uh, engine stand and you're thinking, gee, Mark, you probably haven't gotten quite that far yet that you're ready to put the engine in and you'd be 100% correct. Um, there's a small problem. Uh, the next step uh, after I get the pistons back in is going to be uh, putting on the front and rear, or well, the oil pump on the front and in the rear putting in the main uh, seal. And the problem is that there is no clearance using the engine mount um, to get the actual uh, rear main seal uh, on. So I now have to take the thing back off of the engine stand, set it down someplace safe, um, attach that piece. Hopefully it doesn't cause clearance issues when um, I'm trying to put it back onto the engine stand. Um, and then I can go ahead and put the uh, front uh, oil pump on and uh, you know go from there and probably getting uh, close to putting the oil pan back on here. So yeah, uh, I guess you'll see next, I'm gonna go ahead, this thing mounted up to uh, the engine hoist so that I can pull it back out of the engine stand, set it down safely and uh, get that rear main seal on. Um, so yeah, uh, with that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get started here. Before we start doing the rear main seal install, let's talk a little bit about the Dodge manual that I have. So I bought uh, off eBay a 1991 uh, Dodge Stealth service manual, and I've been using that as my guide for going through and doing the install um, and rebuild of this engine since the beginning. So when it came to doing the uh, work for installing the main rear seal, I looked up uh, the instructions and found that uh, there was a set of sealant or a, an area where sealant needed to go on and it gave a Mopar part number. So doing a quick internet search I found a reference to Permatex and they gave the equivalent uh, sealant and I went online, picked that up and bought it. Uh, when it came I took another look at what I had gotten and it was high temperature thread sealant which really didn't seem to be the right thing to me. So I went on the forums and uh, sort of threw this out there and said, hey, um, what does everyone think? In the meantime, I went and found um, the 1991 3000 GT service manual. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, copies of it online. You can look around and find it. And when I found the information on the 3000 GT, the same section, it gives a different number. 
a 3M number. So I looked that up, and that has a completely different um, composition to it. And in fact, it comes back to uh, Permatex um, Ultra Gray Gasket Maker. So again, uh, in that forum, I posted this information, and somebody uh, very nicely jumped up and said, yeah, that's got to be a misprint in the Dodge Manual. Uh, you definitely want to use a gasket maker for uh, sealing this up. So that's what you're going to see me using here. Uh, but I guess uh, this is another one of those uh, lessons. You know, it, somehow the um, high temp thread sealant just did not seem right to me. Uh, so I'm glad I looked into it uh, because who knows what the results would have been. After letting the Permatex set for about an hour, we're just going to go ahead and torque these things down and we're ready to put it back onto the stand. With the engine back on the stand, we're going to go ahead and get the Woodruff key out of the old crankshaft and put it into the new uh, crankshaft that I put in. Uh, before working on this engine, I never knew what a Woodruff key was. Uh, but the Woodruff key is a small little half moon shaped uh, piece of metal that goes into the crankshaft and it's used to uh, ensure that when you put the timing belt gear on that it has something that it can actually grab a hold of uh, and when it rotates. This is that half moon shaped piece as it comes into focus. Uh, if you notice correctly, I just used a small screwdriver and gave it a couple taps and the thing pops right out. Now we're going to go ahead and put it into the new crankshaft and really all that takes is just setting it into the slot for the uh, Woodruff key and giving it a small couple uh, taps of the hammer. Uh, make sure that you use something like a, a rubber mallet so that you're not damaging anything uh, and it'll pop right in and set down. And that's all there is to it. And now we'll move on to putting the oil pump on. you guess which one is which big thing here is you can see all of the little bits
that are not over here. Obviously, it hasn't ever been in the vehicle before or in a pot of oil before. One other thing that's interesting, uh, I got this from 3SX. Um, this is actually a lot lighter than this. It almost seems like this is aluminum and that's steel. I'm not 100% sure that that's true, um, but you know, picking them up, this one's definitely a little bit lighter. So, uh, adding lightness adds speed. that's going to do it for uh, this uh, this episode um, went through started getting a little bit more together here which is great um, we've got the um, rear main seal on um, and it's all torqued down and we've actually got the oil pump on uh, and that's also all torqued down um, you know one of the the lessons that um, I'm learning here is that I definitely did not take enough notes when I took this thing apart uh, trying to find the right screw that's going into the right spot. Um, a little bit more difficult. I'm doing a lot of double checking. Um, if you've ever taken a look or seen uh, Huracan Ian, Ian's, Huracan Ian's channel, he actually had some major problems with his engine, one of which is um, I'm pretty, he's pretty sure that somebody uh, who rebuilt his block uh, actually split it when they were putting in the bolts uh, for the oil pump. Um, and they cranked them in too tight, uh, and that actually, he thinks, split the block. Hopefully I'm remembering that correctly. I remember seeing an episode about it. So I've been very careful uh, about making sure that um, when I do this, uh, especially putting those back in because there's a lot of different length bolts, uh, that I'm getting the right ones in the right spot. So uh, definitely take better notes. Uh, the big thing and part of the reason why it actually didn't work out well for me is because I'm pretty sure if I go back and look at the videos, I put all the bolts back into the holes where they belonged in the block. But when I sent the block off to be worked on, uh, the machine shop took all the bolts out because they can't be in there for the work that they're doing. So um, best of intentions, uh, but if you're going to be sending your block off for work, uh, make sure you take all the bolts out and you've documented where they go. Because I literally have a box of bolts that came with back with it when it was done from the machine shop. So um, yeah. So I think that's about it. Uh, as always, please leave comments down below. I really appreciate all the comments. Uh, definitely appreciate the guys from uh, the 3SI forums who've been starting to watch some of this and give me comments both over at 3SI.org um, as well as here. Uh, really appreciate all the comments and help. And uh, with that, see ya.